Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome. Another famous person came out of the YMCA. He was born November 19, 1862 in Ames, Iowa. He died November 6, 1935 of a heart attack. He spent his early years at his grandparents and at an orphanage. With only a high school education, he played Major League Baseball for Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia from the years 1883 to 1890. This man, William Ainsley Sunday, Billy Sunday, he found the Lord Jesus as his savior in 1886. He married a woman named Nell in 1888. In 1890, he spoke at the YMCA's on Sundays, and the reason being is that you weren't allowed to play Major League Baseball on Sundays. He asked to be released from baseball to become an evangelist. He became a Presbyterian minister in 1903. Not exactly a Billy Graham, but he had a certain style, a flamboyant style of his own. One of my favorite quotes of Billy Sunday is, going to church doesn't make a man a Christian, just like going to a garage doesn't make a man an automobile. He supposedly preached to over 100 million people and converted over a million people. Tonight I want to read from a book called Ma Sunday Still Speaks. It's a transcription of a two-hour tape of Billy's widow. It was made 19 years after his death and shortly before she died. So you ask me, why am I reading from this book? Well, I'm a PK. My father was a Southern Baptist minister. His name was Reverend William Robert Moyle, and he died August 20th, 2005. The minister's wife, my mother, Emma Grace Moyle, was an elementary supervisor. She died May 10th, 2008. To this day, I miss them, and I'd give anything if I had a tape of their voices. I even wear my dad's ID bracelet and my mother's watch to remember them. And now, Ma Sunday still speaks. Billy's work started in Garner in 1896. The Garner revival was just eight days in length, but blessed be God, he blessed us to the extent of having 268 persons accept the Lord during those eight days. Well, the ministers went wild about it, and many of them in the surrounding towns came in to see what was going on. Two of them invited Billy to come to their town. And Billy promised them he would come. So the local preacher at Garner said, Now you can't go, Billy. You've got to stay. You, you can't close this meeting. It's too good. He said, Didn't you see that man with the big fur coat run down the aisle the other night? Well, that man, he's the richest, I mean the richest farmer in the whole country who came running down to accept the Lord. And of course they were excited. They wanted him to stay. But Billy said, I can't stay. I haven't any more sermons. I preached every single sermon that I have. Sixteen times he preached in those eight days, twice a day. So the Garner preacher let him go, and he went to the next town, and then to the next. And he kept right on going for 39 years, and I praise God for that. Now let me show you my dining room. On the other side I have a family group picture of Mr. Sunday, myself, and our four children. Little Paul was about six, Billy was almost 12, George was 21, and Helen was about 23. Every time I pass through the kitchen into the dining room, I have a glimpse of the children and I smile at them. They've all gone to heaven. I haven't any of them left. I'm very glad I had such a fine family for children. <coughs> On October 12, 1932, Helen, our oldest child and only daughter, was called away from this earth. Billy and I were in Detroit. I got a phone call at 2 a.m. that Helen was dead. Mr. Hunt Sunday heard me scream and he awakened. He hadn't heard the telephone ring. He wanted to go to Sturgis that very night. So we got a Cadillac and I looked at the speedometer and we were going 100 miles an hour. We got there at 5 a.m. The undertaker had taken the body away and Mr. Sunday had a big chill. 
we put blankets on him. And then the poor dear son-in-law was left a widower and I cried together and talked. He wanted me to go with him to the funeral home. It was a beautiful day in October and they closed the town. My son-in-law took us to Elkhart to catch a train to Chicago. As we were driving along, Mr. Sunday said to me, Mother, I don't believe I can go on preaching. And I said, well, Dad, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know. I asked him whether there was any place he wanted to go, and he told me that he couldn't think of a place that he wanted to go. Well, I said, it seems to me under these circumstances that it would be better for you to go right on to your next engagement in Waterloo, Iowa. Go right on. He agreed with me, and he said, I guess I'll go. So that's what we did. The very next night, Billy was preaching in Waterloo on a three-week campaign. He opened his heart to the people. I'm going to say all I want to say and open up my heart right now about our wonderful oldest child and only daughter, Helen Passy. I don't remember all he said, but I know the people were touched and moved by his feeling. And then he said, now this is all I intend to say any time about Helen, but I wanted to say it. I couldn't go on without opening up and telling you just how brokenhearted I am over it. Well, let me show you Mr. Sunday's chair right here. He didn't particularly sit in it that I know of, but it is his chair. I made this beautiful needlepoint tapestry for him just so that it would fit on the chair. Because Billy would say to me, why don't you make me something? You always are making needlepoint for someone else. And I said, well, this is for you. If you had waited another week, I would have finished it and kept it on your chair. Well, that's a fitting end for the story that you've given me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. October 23rd, 1954. Mr. Toastman.